well, it's the start of our Christmas month here on Free 16 Reviews, and what better way to kick it off than with a terrible Hulk Hogan movie? As today, at the channel points the quest of Quaid, we're going to look at Santa with Muscles, released in 1996. So Santa with Muscles is an American Christmas alleged comedy film starring legendary pro wrestler and likely racist Hulk Hogan. Aside from Hogan, this actually had a pretty interesting cast, which included Don Stark, Robin Curtis, Garrett Morris, Steve Valentine, Clint Howard, and also in her first ever film role at the age of 12, Mila Kunis. It's not known how much this cost to make, but it was in theaters for only two weeks, and during its two-week run, it grossed about $220,000. Perhaps the funnest fact about this movie, though, is co-produced by Jordan Belfort, the penny stock scammer who wrote the well-known memoir The Wolf of Wall Street, which was later adapted into a film. Unfortunately, Jordan could not scam people into thinking that this was a good movie, and I hate to start off negative, but god, I just gotta say, Hulk Hogan might be the worst actor of all time. And, like, that's impressive. Like, Maybe they should have just let him do cocaine, like he did in his wrestling promos, and this would have been a better movie. But he wasn't on cocaine, so it sucked. But we'll look at it anyway, as we look at Santa with Muscles, released in 1996. So we start our film by meeting Blake Ford, a self-centered and self-made millionaire who's made his riches by selling bodybuilding supplements and protein powder with his face on it. And let me just say this now, if you can make it for the first 10 minutes of this film, then you can make it for the rest of it, because this is when Hogan's bad acting is at its peak. Anyway, him and his friends drive off to play paintball, and they pass a cop named Hinkley who thinks they're terrorists for whatever, so he starts chasing them, and then they act like terrorists by running away from the police and shooting paintballs at them. Blake bails from his car and ends up going into the mall, where a bunch of kids are waiting for Santa Claus. Meanwhile, we're introduced to the bad guy, Ebner Frost, as well as his assistant, Dr. Blight, who are trying to buy up all the properties in the city. Back at the mall, Blake steals a Santa outfit and continues to hide from the police, this time in a trash chute. Someone pours trash down the chute, obviously, because that's what it's for, and hits him on the head with a giant Santa thing, toppling him to the bottom and knocking him out. Blake, as well as his stacked wallet, are found by Lenny, a mall elf who's indebted to Frost. He wakes up not remembering who he is, so Lenny's able to convince him that he's actually Santa Claus, and takes him to meet the kids. And he does just that, and fun fact, one of these kids is Brenda Song, a future Disney actress. While Blake is being Santa, Lenny unsuccessfully tries to steal from his bank account, while two dudes try to steal the collection money. And Blake does exactly what the real Santa Claus would in that situation, he whoops some serious ass. And after Blake's done whooping ass, he finds that that collection money was for a mission that houses an orphanage, so him and Lenny decide to go there. Dr. Blight and the rest of Frost's cronies show up first, though, and meet Leslie, who is the caretaker of the mission, trying to convince her to sell. Her and the ever caretaker Clayton refuse, so they wrap up their statue and try to drive off with it before they're stopped by Blake using his super strength. Blake and Lenny go into the mission and meet Clayton and Leslie, as well as the three kids that live there, Elizabeth, Taylor, and Sarah. Elizabeth is the only one out of the three that still believes in Santa, and she believes that Blake is there because she wrote him a letter. They stay the night there, and the next day Blake is taken off his fake beard, which alerts Elizabeth that he might not be the real Santa. Frost becomes forever alerted to Blake after he does a television interview, and they kidnap Lenny and tell him to take Blake out of the mission. Blake refuses, so that night Dr. Blight and friends show up to fight him, but he fends them off. One of the kids, Taylor, then decides to go to Frost's mansion to give him a piece of his mind, so Blake and Lenny follow him there. But before they take Lenny home, Blake discovers Frost's evil plans. He wants something that's located under the mission, not the mission itself. The kids show him that there's a vault under there, and they know the first three numbers of the combination, and somehow, Blake knows the last one. And in the vault, they find a room full of valuable crystals, which are electrically charged. Although he still doesn't know who he is, Blake is caught on to the fact that he's not really Santa, but Lenny's like, maybe just keep it up for the kids. Dr. Blight then shows up again, and Blake chases him onto the roof before knocking him out. However, Blake is then betrayed by a robotic Santa, which sends him off the roof and into the back of a garbage truck. Before he passes out, he seemingly regains his memory. Blake wakes up with his memory back and back at his house and immediately calls the mission, but is answered by Leslie, who tells him that she doesn't want him to come back, but it was actually just Dr. Blight using a voice recorder. Frost and friends then show up and take everybody hostage, while he has one of his minions open the vault door. 
Meanwhile, Blake is sadly eating oatmeal until he gets a call for help from Lenny, and him, his chef, his chauffeur, and his butler spring into action. They're then again chased by the police, and this time cornered by them, who for whatever reason have a fucking RPG. Where did a local police department get an RPG? And then they accidentally blow up Officer Hinckley's car, and Blake and friends get away. Blake enters the mission, saves the kids, and beats up Frost Henchman, which includes Brutus the Barber Beefcake, who is dressed as a Japanese man, and I'm not even gonna comment further on that. He checks in with Leslie and Clayton as well, and Clayton sits him down to remind him that he actually grew up at this orphanage, and his best friend when he grew up was Ebner Frost, as he has somehow forgotten all of that information. And after Leslie locks Dr. Blight in the freezer, Blake goes down to confront Frost. He tries to appeal to his humanity, which doesn't work, and chases him into the Crystal Room. They then have a crystal lightsaber battle, which ends when Blake drops his, and Frost starts going crazy and smacking all the crystals on the wall with his crystal. This causes the whole room to become charged up, and basically a ticking time bomb is gonna blow. They all run out of the mission and get out of there safely, but the mission's not safe as it fucking explodes. Frost and friends are then arrested, but the kids have a question. Where the hell are we gonna go now? Luckily, Blake has the idea for a new orphanage, Frost's mansion. I don't think that's how property law works, but whatever. And we end with everybody happy at the new orphanage. In fact, there's a lot more kids now. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And everyone's happy. Blake's still Santa in their eyes, and yeah, whatever. Thank God this film's over. God, it really is impressive, though. Like, how awful of an actor Hulk Hogan is. Like, I don't get it, and it's not just because he's a pro wrestler, either. There's a, there's a lot of pro wrestlers who have successfully made the transition, especially recently. The Rock became, like, the highest grossing actor ever. You can say whatever you want about The Rock's, you know, acting ability, and the fact that he may or may not portray the same person in every single movie he's been in, but he's incredibly successful. You know, John Cena has made transition very well, his role as Peacemaker has been very acclaimed. Batista, Dave Batista, has done it very well. He's done some great comedy shit and some serious shit. Even Stone Cold Steve Austin had some good minor films when he chose to be in them, you know? But, so it really does blow my mind that Hogan is just this bad of an actor. But like, just based off name, he might be the worst actor of all time. If you, like, he's not, he's not the worst actor of all time, but when you factor in his celebrity and name value, yeah, he might be. Again, maybe it's the cocaine. Honestly, maybe they just should have let him do cocaine or steroids and it would have been better. Because you might be wondering, well, wait a minute, wasn't he not on steroids in this? No, ironically, even though he did a movie Santa with Muscles, this was post-steroids. This was after the whole Vince McMahon steroid trial and everybody had to get off it and everything. So this was actually post-steroids for him. Maybe he should have done it pre-steroids. Or during steroids, you get what I mean. So is there anything of value to take from this movie? No, this is the worst Hogan movie I've ever seen. Like, this was worse than Mr. Nanny, which came out three years earlier. Mr. Nanny was a lot better than this. I would happily watch Mr. Nanny on repeat back-to-back -back three times in a row, then watch this one more time. So is this the movie to spice up your holiday season? No. Dear God, no. No, don't watch this. Watch this review. I'm, if you made it this far, I'm glad you watched this review. Thank you, I appreciate it. But no, no, don't watch this. But that is going to do it for my review of Santa with Muscles. Thank you, Quaid, for using your points on this, I guess. Uh, next week, we'll be doing another possibly bad wrestler movie, as we'll be doing Santa's Little Helper, starring The Miz, who is more than likely also a better actor than Hulk Hogan. But that is going to do it for me today. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to drop it a like. If you want to follow any of my social media links, they're all in the video description down below. Thank you to all my patrons who are also named in the video description for supporting me and all my channels. I appreciate you guys. With all that being said, though, my name is Noah Taff. This has been my review of Santa with Muscles, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.